All right, let's determine how you go about determining whether a molecule is polar or nonpolar based on its structure and the types of bonds it has. Let's begin with an example presented here in this worksheet by these example molecules where um, they have in some ways a similar shape, in some ways not. But regardless, we notice that they both have polar bonds and yet it says that one molecule is polar and one molecule is not. Nonpolar molecule, polar molecule, even though they both have polar bonds. So how is that possible? That requires us to back up a bit to define what it is we mean by polar. So just as a reminder, polar is being short here for polar covalent and it is the opposite of nonpolar covalent. These are both types of chemical bonds. Now as a reminder, covalent bonds share electrons. These both share electrons. However, these share their electrons unevenly. These share electrons evenly. So suppose you have some atom A bound to some atom B. If it is polar, it means that one of the atoms, oh, I don't know, maybe this one, is hogging the electrons a bit more, whereas in a nonpolar covalent bond, they are sharing them equally. So this, meant, this is just meant to show that uh, the dots, which represent the atoms, are the... Well, sorry, I misspoke. The dots which represent the electrons represent the bonds. So I suppose what I could do is erase this to redraw it. This is just meant to kind of hammer home the idea that these two are sharing the same electrons but unequally, where you can see they're much closer to atom B right here. And here we'll say the electrons are being shared equally, roughly equal distance in between. So this polar covalent thing means that one of the atoms, being that it has these negative electrons closer to itself, is going to have a partial negative charge. This one, having had the electrons pulled away, it's partial positive charge. So this one has the electrons closer, it's partial negative. This one has the electrons further away, it's partial positive, because the electrons are over here. Whereas neither of these would have any partial charge, they're equally sharing the electrons. So the consequence here is that we've got partial charges here because the electrons are being pulled in one direction. Another way to represent it is the electrons being pulled this way, leaving behind some positive charge. This is the dipole symbol. Now consider this. What if instead of just A and B, in this case the B seems to be attracting the electrons toward itself more, what if you had A bound to two atom Bs? In this situation, the electrons are being pulled this way by one atom B, but is not the other atom pulling the same electrons in the opposite direction? What's this? What's it going to do? Clearly, you have electrons being pulled in the opposite directions by what's going to be roughly equal force. And to understand this, I would refer students to a, an illustration that we have in the notes right here, this tug of war. It should be at least somewhat clear how this is an analogy for this. The two electrons being pulled in opposite directions by the atoms involved in this bond. So given that dynamic, we can say that even though each bond is polar, we'll say polar bonds, they're both polar. The overall molecule represented in this example is a non-polar molecule. So this is a case where the polar bonds are pulling the electrons in opposite direction equally so, such that that pull cancels out, like the tug-of-war analogy shown right here in this cartoon giving a nonpolar molecule. But this only works if the bonds are, being, are pulling in opposite directions. So this right here is linear. In a linear shape, we see we could potentially have them being pulled in opposite directions, thus it cancels. So linear geometry can produce a nonpolar molecule.
a geometry such as this, trigonal planar, also sees the force potentially, if, this is, if these are three polar bonds, sees them pull in opposite directions such that they can also cancel. The tetrahedral shape, uh, I will attempt to draw it with, okay, here's the top part, here's an, ad, here's an atom coming toward, there's an atom going away, here's one to the side. Tetrahedral would also see these forces cancel out. So all three of these, if they contain a polar bond, would produce a nonpolar molecule. On the other hand, what if they don't cancel out in the way these do? Consider an atom such as this. What if they're polar in a way that's like this? Well, clearly now instead of pulling in opposite directions, aren't they both kind of pulling in the same direction here? These bonds are polar, and they're failing to cancel, which means they fail to remove the polarity. The geometry fails to remove the polarity, so it remains polar. Polar molecule. Now this would be a bent shape right here. So a bent shape would fail to cancel out, thus this would produce a polar mole. If these are polar bonds, it will produce a polar molecule. A uh, trigonal pyramidal shape, this is my attempt at a trigonal pyramidal shape. I mean, there's one pointing out toward the viewer, there's one in the background, one kind of off to the side, whatever. Trigonal pyramidal. If these are polar bonds, these will produce a nonpolar molecule. If these bonds are polar, they will produce a polar molecule as well. These are really the only five shapes we cover in this class, so this really kind of covers the only possibilities. If these all have polar bonds, these molecules will be nonpolar. These molecules will be polar because they, they fail to cancel out. These will be nonpolar because they successfully cancel out. Here's another way to kind of put the same idea. So you want to ask how to determine whether a molecule is polar or nonpolar. First question is, are the bonds polar? If the answer is no, then you have a molecule that is nonpolar regardless of its geometry. Nonpolar bonds makes a nonpolar molecule, guaranteed. If the bonds are polar, that's different. If they are polar, then do the bonds balance to cause the polarities to cancel out. If the answer is yes, they do balance, that means bent, actually, so if the answer is yes, they do balance, this means either a trigonal planar tetrahedral or linear molecular geometry. This will result in a nonpolar molecule if they successfully cancel out their polarity. If no, the polarity doesn't cancel, that means it has a bent or trigonal planar shape. Oops, trigonal planar. And that means polar molecule because the polarity fails to cancel away. So that's kind of the zoomed in version. Here is a larger view of the same thing. And that is your overview of how to tell whether a particular molecule is polar or nonpolar. There you have it. Happy studies.